First thing to note is if you just scan up to the position of the patient. So the patient is lying prone, so they're lying on their tummy. We've raised the contralateral hip by simply flexing the knee and putting the foot onto the other leg. This immediately allows this foot to fall into subtalar neutral as long as the knee is in the frontal plane. Okay? Foot falls into subtalar neutral. What we want to do then is to lock the mid tarsal using the thumb on the fourth and fifth med head parallel to the webbing. In that position then we want to plantar flex the first ray. So we now have the foot subtalar neutral, mid tarsal locked, corrected any forward supernatus, foot relative to the leg at 90 degrees. Now, if that's the casting position, what I want to do is to mark the malleoli. So the most prominent inferior bony little point is the apex. We we'll just put a little dot on that. And then I want to trace around the actual malleoli. Reasonably easy in this patient. Some can have a lot of swelling. And I'm going to do the same then on the lateral side. Going to mark the fifth MTP and the first. Now, in terms of the casting, very simple. One piece of plaster that I fold over. Now I'm going to bend it like so. And this part is the part that's going to go around the upper part of the ankle like so. The next part then is just for the actual lower part of the foot kit. So this is the casting technique uh, for the custom made Richie Briz and it doesn't matter in terms of the standard or the fixed hinge or the tamarack hinge. So I smooth the plaster you can see again I'm trying to keep as much plaster in the bandage rather than wringing it out into the basin and then I simply just place it on the posterior aspect of the ankle. You'll see as I just go forward here, I just don't let it close in the front, so you want to have plenty of space to be able to take this off and just smooth it. Second piece of plaster then. And again, note the amount of fold over. It's quite a bit, so I'm not going for a huge depth. I want strength in the plaster rather than having something that is too flexible. Past the fifth MTP, put that on, and make sure that you're going to meet in the middle. Scissors, one little cut towards the outside of the heel, like so. Then you can smooth this in. Patient's still lying in the same position, so they're prone, contralateral hip raised. Then smooth this in, just up into the sulci. You can add a four foot plaster if you want, but in most cases I don't, I allow the lab to do that. Cut that little bit off at the heel and smooth it in so we don't have any bumps on the plaster there. Although again the lab can accommodate for that. Smooth it in, make sure now the plaster is smooth and there's no bandage pattern left. And now we get into the position. So Once you start moving it, you've got to again smooth it in, dorsiflex, lock the mid tarsal, and plantar flex the first ray. You can see it creates the wrinkles here as you correct the forefoot supernatus. Foot relative to the leg is at 90 degrees. Smooth in around the ankle and keep the position. So subtalar neutral, lock the mid tarsal, thumb is on the fourth and fifth met head moving into the sagittal plane, so slight dorsiflexion. Be careful not to pronate the foot at this point or to flatten it and create a correction of the forefoot supernatus. You're trying to get all five met heads on the same plane with subtalar neutral, with mid tarsal lock. Then depending on the pathology, you can choose the hinge uh, type. 
In this case, we're going to go for a standard Ritchie brace with a standard hinge to allow plantar flexion and dorsal flexion of the ankle, but we'll correct um, an out of the car flat foot. Are you comfortable there? Yeah? No. I need it. Great. And if you can there, and you just come in and zoom sort of from the top down on that so they can see the position. Right from the back of the heel looking down if you can. Above it, yeah, like that. So that's a reasonably fast drying plaster, which is good quality plaster, and it's just hardening. Now sometimes you won't get full correction of the forefoot, and then the lab can adjust that with a little wedge and fill the plaster and do the intrinsic cast balancing as normal. Um, but you want to try and correct it as much as possible. So this cre creates correction in the sagittal plane, frontal plane and transverse plane. In terms of posting, we will simply go to vertical with a 4 to 6 millimeter curvy sky which creates a supination moment of force just at the medial aspect of the um, heel area. Just loosen at the level of the ankle just slowly and this is why you want the strength here because you don't want it too flexible and then just slowly pull back and just drop it down slightly. Take out your fourth and fifth thumb impression just by pushing down into it and there we have the cast for the Ritchie brace and you've captured the good medial longitudinal arch profile. The marking from the skin is transferred onto the cast so that you can get the ankle joint axis which is unique to this patient. When you set it on the table you want to see how much it rocks in. Ideally you want to try and balance it in the lab so that it sits to heel vertical. So there's still a degree of correction required by the lab here intrinsically to get this heel to vertical. And that's it. And that'll be what the lab does here. It'll put plaster right around, fill it with plastic parts, balance it to vertical, manufacture the foot plate to that, and then choose whichever hinge is appropriate.